coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada, streaming live this evening on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, Telegram, and Rumble. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I am Toolman Tim, and today is December the 30th, 2022, and this is episode 228 of the workshop podcast. How the hell is everyone out there? Boy, I think I'm still tired from last night's episode. What a, what a, anyway, what a fucking fiery episode it was. So good to have everyone here this evening. I'm always, uh, always enjoy it. Uh, first off, I brought an old fashioned with me. Tonight is Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve, 120 proof, small batched, age nine years. Not bad. Not my favorite. But it's okay. I'm enjoying it so far. We'll see. I'll let you know when I'm done. <laughs> uh, oh, and what do we got here? Sunnyland Camper, good to have you. Martinson Family, great to have you. Brian from the Lots Project, great to have you. Chris Dixon here. Uh, anybody else I've missed yet? No. Uh, did I say Martinson Family? I probably did. Good to have you as well. So, yes, tomorrow is New Year's Eve. And, of course, what do we do on New Year's Eve? I don't know go to bed at nine o'clock at night. Yeah, that's usually what we do. Hey, Byron, good to have you. Honestly, this entire month is kind of me looking forward to next year and setting goals and deciding what great things I'm going to do. And one realization I've had this year, I don't know how exactly to put it, but if you want to be great at something, you have to be obsessed with it in a good sense. And you have to decide that that's going to be the thing you're going to be great at. You know, an Olympic gymnast decides they're going to be great at being an Olympic gymnast. But that means they're probably not going to have the time to become an NBA superstar or, I don't know, a, a world-class deer hunter, whatever it is. So the things that you, the thing that you're passionate about, the thing that you're obsessed with, the one or two or three things that you absolutely need to do. That is the thing that you're going to be remembered for. That is the thing that you're going to be great at. And uh, that's the thing that we're going to do in 2023. So <laughs> two announcements. Let's get them out of the way for you guys. But uh, number one, we got a ton of people over in the Telegram group this evening. Always great to have them. But I started the Telegram group almost on a whim about a year ago now after seeing how effective Telegram can be in small groups for sure. <laughs> and how it is the place to hang out as a community and share information. It's kind of like an, it kind of reminds me a bit of the old message boards where, you know, one person message, the next person reply. And then maybe six days down the road, uh, Dan will log in and be like, hey, I've been too busy getting shit done. But here I am, and now I'm going to respond to everybody's messages. That's just the way it is. I love the place. And, you know, when I'm busy, like I am in the winter when snow's just a fallen, I might not be in there for a day or two, or I might just drop in the end of the night and say, hey, guys, how's your day been? But there's always somebody in there always sharing. So the reason I bring that up is if you're not using any social, I get it. And if you're adverse to social media, that's cool, too. But if you're looking for a place for like-minded people that are going to give you a verbal kick to the ass, motivation, inspiration to live that self-reliant entrepreneurship, whatever lifestyle, just come by and join. You can leave if you hate us. I mean, if we stink or if we're ugly or you don't like the cut of our jib, walk out and leave. No big deal at all. Or just delete. I don't know, whatever. Just don't announce you're leaving. That's all I can say. So, <laughs> all right. And then number two is because I always love to launch new projects and I love to have crazy things on the go. Uh, tomorrow is the official launch of Workshop Radio, or I don't want to say official launch, the, the inaugural edition of Workshop Radio. And if you don't know what that is, well, I'm excited. Basically, I reached out to any and all creators who have been part of the Workshop community in one form or another this year. As of right now, I believe I have 18 different pieces of content from 18 different creators. We're going to have a, a complete live stream. It's going to be 24 hours of audio content. Just in case you wonder, it's going to be in two 12-hour segments. So you'll see part one and then part two will start after that. The reason for that is so that I can keep it uh, archived on YouTube. If you go longer than 
uh, 12 hours, then YouTube will not archive it. And I want to make sure it's there so that everybody can go back and use it. Hey, Jason, how are you? <laughs> My second favorite snow Mexican. I appreciate that very much. And yes, it is definitely, um, well, it's not snowy up here. It was beautiful today. And maybe it's just my old man brain, but the day almost seemed to be just a hair longer. Maybe it's just because the sun was out. But so anyway, workshop radio tomorrow, guys. It starts at noon, mountain time, right here on the channel. You're going to be able to turn it on in the background. It's inspired by, you know, old-fashioned AM talk radio. Basically, hey, ENSK sent me some likes over on Telegram or TikTok. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So it was inspired by good old... AM talk radio that I remember always being on in the workshops and the shops when I was a kid. So it's going to be there. I'm going to have content from all these different people. And there's going to be a pre-recorded intro that I did, basically my thoughts and how much I appreciate each person that was involved in the workshop this year. So I really hope you enjoy it. I want to have it as background noise to inspire you to jump into 2023 and get shit done. So there we go. Now, one other thing, uh, if you guys, the, I think it's the Prepper Zone. He's a dude with really messed up, wacky hair over on TikTok. The guy cracks me up. He, a uh, big dude like me, he has no problem walking around with no shirt on, all kinds of, just a funny guy. Anyway, he brought to my attention the other day that it had been 10 years since the world ended um, on the Mayan calendar. So I thought I'd better mention that because just so you don't think I'm just completely obsessed with Y2K, uh, the, the Mayans are also in there too. So I thought I'd share that with you. Hey, Nina from uh, Texas, good to have you. And of course, Jason from down in Tennessee. And Chris Dixon says, my hair ain't any longer. Yeah, mine's not getting any longer either, guys. So here we are. I went back tonight. So again, last night was all about looking back. And tonight is hopefully almost completely about looking forward. But in order to look forward, we're going to go back a few years. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the goals I set, where things ended up. And uh, yeah. What the hell we're up to, man? But first off, and I'm going to warn you, every single year that I do a New Year's episode, it is going to be on the topic of setting goals, not resolutions. Now, you can say, Tim, whatever. It's just semantics. You can argue words all you want, and that's totally fine. But for me, what has worked has been saying, ditch the New Year's resolution and set yourself yearly goals because it just works. So let's talk about it a little bit. Here's my thing. I've always said that the idea of a New Year's resolution sets you up for failure. When I worked at the hardware store, I've told this story many, many times. There's a guy there worked in plumbing, lifelong smoker. Every single year, he would set his resolution to be, I'm going to quit smoking. And some years he'd go to the doctor and get on the patch. And some years he'd take a pill. And some years, he, anyway... Sometimes he would last two days. Sometimes he'd last two months. I think one year he might have went four months, but he always ended up smoking again. And the reason was, is that it was a, a binary thing. Resolutions are binary. They're either, you know, open or closed, success or failure. There's no um, inching along with goals, with, with the resolution. So you, you know, you get to the point where I want to go on a diet. Well, I broke down and ate pizza fuck it. I must have failed. So guess what? We'll wait till next year. And that's where it ends. Resolution gets thrown in. Why do you think, uh, you know, the, the gyms are so packed on January 1st, but by February 1st, they're not. And I'm absolutely talking to myself here too. So the thing about a resolution is you said it, you really don't empower yourself at all. You just say, Hey, I'd like to do this. And then of course, the first time adversity shows up, well, I guess I'm just going to quit and go back to the old way I was. So the thing about goals is, in my mind, the idea of a goal is, <laughs> have a good night, Sunnyland. Good to have you in here, even for a few minutes. Always love seeing you. Goals set you up for success. So the thing is, if you want to be somewhere, if you want to do something, if you want to, uh, Arizona Re Renaissance man, good to have you. I if you want to succeed at something, set some goals. And not just one goal, set a whole shit ton of goals. The cool thing about goals is they're not plus or minus. They're a gradual thing, right? So I'll use the example this year of wanting to get to 10,000 subscribers, which I didn't hit. No worries. But setting a goal 
of getting to 10,000 subscribers, for instance. And I mean, you can set this for, I'd like to have 15 new customers in my business, or I'd like to get to $100,000 revenue this year. It doesn't matter. The cool thing is, um, you know, if you wake up January 1st and you say, well, damn it, I didn't make it to $100,000 this year. Are you going to quit and give up? Hell no, you're not going to quit and give up. The reason is, is because you just got fucking started. It takes a year to get to 100,000. Hey, Ian, nice to have you over on uh, TikTok. Hey, Renegade, good to have you, brother. So that's the thing. You set a goal. You have a year to succeed at that goal. So guess what? If you go on a diet and, well, shit, I ate pizza on January 3rd. Well, guess what? January 1st and 2nd, I was on that diet. January 4th, I wake up, I'm on that fucking diet again. And I'm going to stay on that diet for the rest of the year. Because that's my goal. My goal is to get healthy. My goal isn't to keep myself from shoving my face full of pizza. Because I might do that once or twice. Simple as that. So resolutions are kind of one of those things where it tells you where, hey, I might like to be there. You know what would be good? I, I don't know. It'd be good to be more successful. Oh, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. I really don't. But uh, I do know what failing is. And as soon as I fail, well, we'll just kind of forget about it. But a goal says, all right, what is my definition of being successful? You know, um, Chris Dixon this year, huge. He got some really big orders for some uh, really cool metalworking products. And he may or may not have seen that coming. But I bet you that helped push his success goals along. That's the type of thing. If, if you want to be, hey, Bruce Howard, my brother-in-law from out east is in TikTok. Good to have you here, brother. And uh, yeah, so here's the thing. So set some goals. Uh, it might be the other cool thing about setting goals is it's incremental. It helps you move along the path as you go. So say you want to get to, again, $100,000 in sales. Well, guess what? Uh, each month, we're going to work at increasing things just a little bit more. Brian Garman says now he has a goal to get a pizza. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all, man. I mean, you know, if that's your sort of thing, right? So now here's the thing. Uh, again, a resolution, there's no time frame involved. It's indefinite. It has no urgency behind it. So, you know, it's like, well, I'll get up this morning and I might or might not do it, but I got to stick my mind to it every single time. And my problem is, is whenever I set something that's open-minded, I, uh, or open-ended, sorry, it's, it's like video games, you know, the, the millennials, the Gen Z's, my son, they love the sandbox games where they walk around and they explore and they try this trail down here and they try, oh, I've got this new mission, but I might go do this for a while or I might play the game for, you know, six hours just to get some extra experience points. That drives me crazy because I, I, I there's no urgency. I can just run around and do anything. And if I can run around and do anything, I'll probably do nothing. So setting specific tasks in time frames, it allows me to measure my success. But what it does is it, it builds a sense of urgency in my life, right? And uh, hey, Chuck, good to have you, brother. Always good to have you. Mm -hmm. So a sense of urgency to me is the most important thing mm -hmm. in setting goals. It's one of those things that says, guess what? This year, I'm going to do this. And by the end of the year, I'm going to be there. And because I have a goal and I have a time frame in mind, it kind of helps formulate or helps... Um, a lot. It, it, okay, back up a little, Tim. What it does is having a time frame and having goals helps shape all the decisions I make in the run of a year. That's what I like about having a sense of urgency and having goals. Because every time I can decide whether, huh, okay, do I want to sit down and scroll through TikTok for three hours? Or do I want to go out to the garage and install my furnace or my, uh, well, my furnace, yes, or my wood stove. Well, guess what? Which one of those meets my prepping goals this year? I can promise you it ain't sitting and scrolling on TikTok. Doesn't mean I don't do it. It just means that it always allows me to frame my decisions. Hey, um, oh yes. Uh, Ian says, is there a second audio on this live hearing two soundtracks? I wonder what's going on. Um, sorry, Ian, if you, I don't know. I wonder if we're getting some sort of feedback through the speakers. Anyway, I apologize if I'm not sure if you're a YouTube guy, but if you want to pop over on YouTube, anybody out there getting two feedbacks on YouTube, because I haven't heard anything from anybody yet, but it's it's on the workshop anyway. Um, I apologize. I don't know 
what's going on in there, we can, uh, let's mute this. There. Okay. How's that? I Ian, let me know. I think I had something playing in the background. Anyway, sorry guys. And uh, <laughs> Martinson family says the munchy storm is real. Leads to prepping as you plan to have pizza and poutine already when you finish the doobie. Oh dear God. <laughs> um, Nate says, I don't hear anything on YouTube. Did I just um, audio all clear in YouTube. Okay. Nate's just being an asshole. So there we go. <laughs> Renegade butcher calls it, uh, the, the woo woo people call it manifestation. Uh, the self-help people call it focus and drive, but it's all the same thing. In my high school graduation, uh, when we had the special guest speaker, he called it getting in the flow and I don't care what you want to call it. I just call it getting shit done. And when you set goals and you have a time frame it allows you to make the right decisions each and every time that something comes up so i want to read something to you guys ah good thanks ian sorry about that and uh, <laughs> nate says he didn't hear an echo on youtube i appreciate it brother i'm just busting your balls so i want to read you guys something darkwing dave hey good to have you over on uh twitter twitch there we go these old eyes i tell you so this was written July 6th, 2020, and I'm going to go over kind of my goal setting process a little bit for you guys, and I hope you enjoy it and share your goals as we go along, because I'm going to ask you, I put it out really late today, so I only got two submissions, but I want to hear from you guys on what exactly it is that you are going to kick ass on in 2023, and I'm going to start, and then we're going to share it, and... We're going to go from there. Dan, ah, his ears must be burning. We got Dan over in Telegram this evening. We got people all across the board. We're even streaming on Rumble this evening, guys, and over on Twitter. So July 6, 2020, that was only about four months after I um, launched my YouTube channel. One of my goals this year is to start a YouTube channel to share my success and my failures. And this one kind of is pretty cool. And to create community where we can share. And also, I'd like to hit a 1,000 subscribers this year. My first actual quality YouTube video wasn't uploaded until February of this year. And we just hit our 200 subscriber. So, July 6, 2022, I wrote down that I wanted to uh, create a community that didn't exist yet. Guess what? You guys are here. I'm here. This is the fucking workshop community, guys. This was my goal uh, two and a half years ago to create a community. I was looking forward to when I hit 1,000 subscribers. Well, guess what? Uh, 6,200 and some this morning, almost 10,000 on TikTok, um, 130,000 downloads of the podcast this year. So there's people out there. Uh, there's a hunger for being inspired, and it's incredible. So thank you, guys. But... This was two and a half years ago when I said this, before I even knew exactly if I was going to even launch a podcast. But at my 200th subscriber, I was ready to create a community. I set goals, guys. That's what happens. July 6, 2022. Hey, John Scaparli, we got you over on TikTok. Nice to have you. I hope I pronounced your last name right. Good morning, crew from the Philippine Nomad. And Nate, I saw your goal for 2023. I got it started here for a little bit. So... I'm going to tell you a little bit about my goal setting process, and then I'm going to go back through the years. I, I went back through my phone, and I have eight years worth of goals. It was pretty cool to see where things came, where things went, uh, how they've grown. Uh, hello, T-O-F-U. Good to have you. Love to have you. Not sure. Oh, hello, Tofu. How you can tell I'm not around Tofu very often. <clears throat> All right. So usually around the middle of November, guys, it's when I start taking a long, hard look at my goals. I start flipping through. I have a notepad in my phone right now that says goals for 2022. And I start going over my say, I got six weeks left. Tick tock, tick tock. You guys have heard that before, right? The end of the year is fastly approaching. What can I still get done this year? What do I have to say? It's not going to happen, brother. You need to accept that because that does happen. It's okay. It doesn't mean you failed. It, <laughs> because if you succeed on more goals than you didn't, if you succeed on one goal this year, you have improved from the year before, right? So that's the beauty of setting goals. There's no failure in setting goals because all improvement is success. 
So I look, I see what I got left to do. I'm saying, okay, well, what do I do? Um, what have I done? What was my word of the year this year? If you guys aren't familiar with word of the year, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Jenny Hill gets the credit over on the Living Free in Tennessee uh, community. But what I love about it is it gives you a theme for your year. It gives you focus heading into the next year, right? So awesome. Uh, Renegade says the Filipino mudslide is in the house. Good to have you, Mike. Always appreciate you in here. So I look back, I say, okay, what is the things I can still get done this year? Love it. Now, the next thing is, okay, in the last six weeks of the year, time to start looking forward to next year. So I start a brand new notepad, a notepad file on my phone, and it says goals for 2023. And I mind dump in that thing. I take a mental shit all over that file. Whatever comes out gets dumped in that file all day, every day. Anytime I think, oh, this might be something I want to do next year, it goes in there. It's just like my ideas file. It's just a place to take a metaphorical dump. Let's put it like that, okay? <laughs> so everything that pops into my brain gets written down because if something pops into my brain for 22 seconds, on second 23, it's gone. So I got to write it down. And then about two weeks out at the end of the year, I start organizing those goals. I organize the hell out of them. I cross things out. I add things. I change the wording. Agent of Will just joined us on TikTok. Good to have you. I pare things down and I organize them. I put them into categories. Uh, the ones I've used for probably the last four-ish years are prepping, content creation, business, personal improvement, and hobbies. Because if you don't leave room for hobbies, if you don't leave room for things that you just do because then you're going to get yourself burnt out on a whole lot of things. So then once I get everything kind of broke down into categories, and I'm not this organized about a lot of things, so let's just put it that way, okay, guys? <laughs> so once I get everything broke down into categories, that's when I start first of the year, or even sometimes a few days before I start trying to figure out what do I need to do to get there. And then underneath each of those goals, sometimes I'll write down steps. And as a goal gets partially completed, I'll put a star next to it. I put five stars. By the time I get to the fifth star, it's completed. I cross it out. Nothing I love more than crossing items off of a list. I I don't know what the uh, mental faculty it is that causes me to enjoy it so much, but there is something absolutely gorgeous about crossing an item off a list. I will actually leave three or four items just so I can cross all three or four off at the same time. It's just that satisfying. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of how I set my goals. Let's go back just a little bit. I, I kind of wanted to just because the cool thing about goals is their compounding. We talked about it last night. Along the lines of, if you improve 1% every day, the end of the year, you're going to improve 3,800%, right? So things are compounding. Now, imagine doing that over, well, eight years now I've been doing this. I write them down. I've got them all the way back to 2016 in my phone. It's it's really cool. And uh, thanks, Tofu. I like that. Tofu says, oh, hobbies. I'm going to, uh, I like that as a category. I think I'll adopt it. I needed to because if I didn't, uh, I wouldn't make room for it, right? So the thing about making all of these goals and these lists is anytime I have downtime, whenever there's like a, hey, what should I be doing right now? I always have something that helps me formulate those decisions. That's what I like about making these goals and these lists, right? Okay, so goals for 2018. That means, and for those of you, you know, most of you know who I am. If anybody's new here, I really got started with a handyman business doing all the shit that nobody else wanted to do. And it's been six years. It'll be six years in May since I started. And five years. Yeah, five years in May since I went full time. Had to think about that for a minute. So six years ago, I started this. Five years ago, I went full time or well, I wasn't doing it full time, but it was the only income I had. And we've lived off it and we've built some pretty cool things. Just got a thumbs up over on Facebook. Thank you. So you know, five years ago, December 2017, I wrote, set up my business. Um, business number, get liability insurance, improve your skills, learn how to lay laminate floor, get better at drywalling, learn how to frame, uh, build a railing, get your pesticide course, build a deck, add five customers, pick a business name, design a poster, and get business cards printed. That right there 
in December of 2017 was when I really, uh, this is when I was going balls to the wall. I had already started the business before, but this is when it became real. And I set these goals and I said, the, you know, and these are the, these are the baby steps of a goal. They, none of these even barely had the only one that had anything to do with money was add five customers. So that's where it starts, guys, setting those goals back in 2017. And all of those were absolutely something I could get better at. Laminate floor. Um, thanks, Andrea, for sharing the live. I really appreciate that. So, you know, getting a business number. Well, that that's a binary, yes or no. And I only have to do it once. So once I get it done, boom, five stars, cross it off. Liability insurance. I had to figure out a way to pay a liability insurance. The first year I did it, it was like $400 for a year. Now it's like $5,000 a year. So go figure. Um, add five customers. Well, that's simple. Every time I add a new customer, I got to add one star to that list. Five later, you know, Vistaprint, get somebody to design a logo. I spent way too much time designing a logo at that point because I didn't know about Fiverr and I sent it off and got a thousand business cards printed up because that's what I wanted to have, right? So set those goals and then it leads you. And it's a pretty cool process, guys. Why am I whispering? I don't know, because I'm freaking excited about it, right? So next, the next year, so December 2018, what goals did I set? Well, this was a cool one. Um, I had a lot of snow customers, but I didn't have a lot of grass customers. So I put turn snow customers into year round subscribers. So I offered all of my snow customers the same flat monthly rate for grass. And guess what? 80% of them took me up on it. And again, I developed year round income because of that. And then another goal was develop $2,000 a month in guaranteed income. In other words, grass and snow customers have it up to $2,000 a month. And at that point, that would have been like $24,000 a year. And, and, and it got there. Um, I had get myself up to 30 snow customers, set long-term one, five and 10 year goals. And then this was a question I started asking myself like a year in, what is my final goal for this business? Where do I want to end up? So I was already, you know, a couple of years in saying, I, I need to figure out where this is going to end up and what I want to do with it. So there, set another goal, right? Then goals for 2019. So, uh, sorry, goals for 2020 written in December, 2019. And this is where shit really gets cool. Build the daycare. Uh, we didn't have a daycare, but we knew we wanted a daycare. Uh, I put build the daycare, third income stream. Income stream number one was all seasons maintenance, which is my uh, handyman business. Income stream two, the YouTube channel, which at that point was making almost nothing, doing quite a bit better now. Uh, and then this would have been number three. And we were crazy enough to open up a daycare right in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. And guess what? Becky's doing better with that now than I ever did. And I'm still doing with my handyman, my what is now property management business. So set goals, set big goals, set big, hairy, audacious goals, because you just never know. And it, the cool thing about a great big goal, like a huge goal, is the fact that if you don't hit it, you've still gone so much further than you would have. That's the difference, right? Now, here's one I put down in my goals in uh, for 2020, set up a membership program, and then a bunch of question marks after it. I didn't even know what it was going to consist of. And guess what? It didn't happen until early 2022. But that idea was way back there, you know, two and a half years ago, two years ago. And then the next one was change my focus to property management. And uh, that's where I realized that I really wanted to... Uh, get the business toward because I knew that was the type of thing that was nice guaranteed income on a monthly basis. It was work I really enjoyed and it was work that this old body could do a lot longer than snow removal or grass cutting. And I really enjoy it. And it's, that's become what I love about having that written down in December, 2019 is that every decision in my business I have made since I wrote that down has been colored by those one, two, three, four, five words. Every time I decide whether I'm going to take on another job or not, I have to say, is that focused on property management? Now, 
Snow is in that as well, but it has allowed me to turn down things that I wouldn't have turned down two, three years ago because I was scared I wasn't going to make enough money. But for a year, it set things back just a little bit income wise. But by the next year, I was right back up and a little further ahead. So having goals, having themes, it all helps, right? So let's, uh, you guys heard me talk about word of the year, right? Um, I love word of the year. I don't know why. I think the first time I heard it, I'm not even sure. It was sometime early 2020. I believe it was on an episode of uh, Living Free in Tennessee. I think Nicole had Jenny Hill on and she was talking about the concept. And I'm like, huh, I think I need to do that. So I just want to share with you a little bit here. So my word of the year in 2020 was build. And uh, it was kind of a play on the fact that I was a handyman and I wanted to build something great. That was when I started, you know, 2020, February, I launched the YouTube channel and I went on to Living Free in Tennessee in my, uh, you know, with Nicole, scared enough that I canceled on her at the end of 2019 and I went on 2020 and I launched my YouTube channel, but I had a plan. I said, I'm going to do a 10 part series on how to start a handyman business. And I did it and I launched it that day and like, well, there you go. What was I, uh. Five months later, I had 200 subscribers. I didn't make it very far that first year. But build was, I wanted to build. And to build, you need to have a foundation. You need to have building blocks. And so I started there. And that was absolutely everything that I did that year. And I'm going to use these words just about the YouTube channel now. But for 2020, every decision I made was, is this going to help me build something great? And it was like when I would start a new job years ago. When I went in, I always knew those first two weeks, I wouldn't have any bus- uh, any busy work when I'd go there. But what I did know is I'm going to spend those first couple of weeks, couple of months building the skills and the knowledge that I'm going to need to help me succeed all the way along. I'm going to do everything and anything I can to just learn because soon enough, my days are going to be filled up with busy work that means nothing to me. And then I'm going to have, it's going to be way harder to build the essentials. So 2020 was build. Hello, Tofu says, I'm going to read this question for you. Where do you keep your goals written? One location or in heaps of notebooks? I've had an iPhone going back to the iPhone 4S. I've had an iPhone since 2000 and I don't know, 10 years now anyway. And let's see. So 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There we go. So there's eight years of goals. So going back as far as 2016, every year I create a single file in Notepad on my phone called Goals for 2016, Goals for 2017. And they're in there so that they're always with me because I don't go anywhere without my phone. And so when they're in that central location, I never lose them. I can edit them. I'll typically once or twice a year email them back to myself so they're also in my Gmail all of that. But that is the way I keep track of them. If you ask my wife, I have all the best intentions in the world when I write something in a paper notebook. But, and I'm going to try again this year. I really am. But I'm so lazy and so lax with paper notebooks that I just, I don't always do it. So for me, goals go straight into my notepad and they stay there. And they're not written in concrete, but they're definitely written in ones and zeros and they're always there for me to look at. So I hope that part helps. So 2020 was build. 2021 was grow. And you might say, well, what the hell's the difference between build and grow? Well, in 2020, I put the foundation down. Every decision I made was, well, is this going to help me build a community like you guys who I was creating content for that didn't exist yet? So I was, hey, you know, is this going to be a strong foundation to start from? But then grow was, well, I've built something great so far. Might not be real big, but guess what? I'm going to water it and it's going to get bigger. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm just going to basically be doing more of the same. Anytime something works, I'm going to do more of it. And um, I will save that question for you right here too. Ahas has a question for me. We'll come back to it in just a second. So grow was... It was the way for me to focus on um, growing. (laughs) 
<laughs> that sounds so stupid, Tim, but it's true. It just It's just that four-letter word that always, again, helps me focus on the exact things that I want done this year. And it was to grow this into something great. So I, I started the building blocks. I learned how to make videos. I learned how to record videos. I learned how to upload, how to edit. I streamlined the process. That first year was basically well, I'm just going to learn. And if I got to tear it all down and start over, that's cool. But once I had that foundation built, I'm like, all right, it's time to grow. Let's grow the hell out of this thing. And I got to, what was I at? 2000 subscribers at the end of that year or 2,500, I believe. So yeah. Now I changed my theme a little bit uh, in 2022 and the word for 2022 was invest. And I had a hell of a time figuring out what word I wanted to use because I, I wanted something that incorporated a couple of different things. So number one was I was ready to invest every single penny that I made from content back into being getting better at it. So if that meant better gear, if that meant better training, if that meant uh, subscriptions to better programs, if that meant to the professional edition of StreamYard, which allows me to stream to eight different places, I did it. Every penny I made basically went back into my content. But that word invest had two meanings. It meant financial, but it also meant time. And to me, investing meant collaborating. It meant getting out there and connecting with absolutely everybody and anybody I could. That meant fireside freedom. Uh, you know, it meant um, collaborating with Brian from the Lots Project on a ton of different things. It meant getting on, one of my goals was getting on 12 different podcasts this year. And guess what? I was on 13. It meant spending money to go to events where I could meet my community and incredible doers in real life. It meant going there and spending a ton of time putting together three different presentations to present at three different live events last year. That's what invest meant to me because I felt like investing like that would bring huge dividends in the year and in the next year. And in my opinion, there is no better way None of this, this is so cliche, but it, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And every time you invest in an event or you invest in a relationship or you invest in a collaboration, it always brings something back. And you don't do it because of it, but by doing it, that's what happens every single time. It's incredible. I love it. It's like, I don't know, it's like the power of compound interest, you know? It's something you might not see a return on right away, but just say every single time you go on a podcast, you find maybe two or three new listeners. Well, guess what? 12 podcasts in a year is 36 new listeners. And if you have 36 new listeners and you put out 150 episodes this year, that is what? 5,000 new downloads from going on 12 podcasts and getting three listeners from every single podcast that you went on. How crazy is that? Right? I just did that math in my head. Not that that's that big of a deal, but there you go. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I always say every time you go onto somebody else's platform, their, uh, your message is getting in front of, you know, a thousand sets of ears, a thousand sets of eyeballs. And if you get one or two people who think, wow, that crazy Canuck, that guy that lives closer to Santa Claus and he lives to me, he knows what the hell he's talking about and I'm going to follow him. And that's really cool because then they might share something. They might, you know, they might watch all my videos. So then all of a sudden, you know, if they listen to 150 of my podcasts, one new person, that's 150 downloads. That is, um, let's see, what did I put out? Two review videos a week. So that's 100 review videos. You know, there's 100 videos watched. So that means that they're bringing income in for me. Like all of that. So the, the whole idea is investing in reaching out to other people, collaboration, said it and you're going to roll your eyes. You're going to say, Tim, don't say it, but a rising tide floats all boats. And it's absolutely true. So do it just anyway. So that was my word. And then uh, I haven't said it yet, but I'm going to announce my word of the year for this year. And it's concentrate. And I don't mean like orange juice. I mean, uh, concentrate. So what do you mean by that, Tim? What exactly does concentrate mean? Well, um, it means a few things, but to concentrate on something, it means to focus on one thing to the detriment of something else. So that meant for one thing, I am going to stop. Uh, well, as a group, we decided that it was time to extinguish the flame of the Fireside Freedom podcast because I loved it. We had a great time. It feels like it ran its course. And 
there you go. Um, but the more, the longer. Okay. Uh, if you guys have heard the concept of niching down. So in YouTube, in content creation, you want to find something that appeals to a niche audience. Because if you can do that, you're going to find the most receptive audience for the least amount of work. I hate to use that term, but that's kind of what it is. So the idea is concentrating things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do more short form content because that is what's growing huge right now. I am going to double down on my Amazon affiliates. I'm going to double down on my tour view videos because those are the things that are making me the most money. I'm going to concentrate on investing my time in the things that bring the greatest return. And I'm going to eliminate the things that bring the least return. And that's what concentrate is going to be this year. Not changing anything per se, but I'm just going to focus all of my time on the things that bring the greatest return. Simple as that. Um, yeah, Brian said, there you go. Um, float. There, That is one right there. So talk about eliminating something. Oh, yeah. A rising tide floats all boats unless that boat is float. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that sounded like, uh, um, sound like a poem there, Renegade. I didn't know you were a poet. So, yeah, that that that's how it is. So eliminating the things, that's what I did this year. It was even starting earlier than that. But I was streaming to float. I was getting zero, um, zero investment or zero return there. So I chopped it off as much as I wanted to. And I couldn't. Um, I, I, much as I wanted to stay there, I couldn't. So I got rid of it every single time. But then I expanded into Twitter and Rumble. So concentrating is maybe trying a few new things as well. But yeah, um, Nate says um, it worked for us. We got out of our comfort level and went on shows to get the experience and grow our listeners as well. We wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for others helping us. That's exactly it, guys. That's how it works. You get out there and I'm still going to have Erin on to interview me so she can work on her interview skills and be a, a little more... Um, uncomfortable because the key to learning something is usually getting pissed off and being uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, shit, I can do this. Um, so yeah, that's where it's at. Getting uncomfortable, stretching every time you grow, you know, you remember when you were a teenager and you get those growing pains? Well, that's what happens when you grow, something stretches, it feels uncomfortable and then you work on it. Right. Uh, Aaron says, crap, you remembered. I'm sorry, Aaron. I might not remember what I had for supper, but I can remember things like that. So, <laughs> and Josh, yes, you should monetize the poetry. And Nate says he could hear an ankle biter. Yep, Daisy was upstairs getting mad at nothing outdoors. So I hope you hope you guys enjoyed that. Every she has the largest, the loudest bark. So once in a while, you can hear her for sure. Um, so yeah, that is my uh, word of the year for sure. So um, I want to talk about a few of my goals for the year. We'll, we'll run through those quick. Um, some, then I'm going to share some where we're heading and then let's, uh, let's see. Um, then we'll talk about your guys's, the goals, the things you're going to do this year, uh, because I love hearing that. So, um, all right, sliding down right here. So I'm going to slide in just, so again, once I've picked the word of the year, which is concentrate, that helps me, um, that helps formulate the goals that I'm going to set because, you know, um, focusing on something that hasn't brought a return, probably not going to be in my goal list this year because I'm concentrating on the things that are going to bring the best return, right? So just go back to the live chat here for you. And uh, <laughs> uh, Renegade says, John has always says monetize trolls. I should probably start with myself. Well, you know, the trolls that live under a bridge, they were pretty good at poetry. So just saying, Josh, give it a shot, right? And uh, um the Philippine nomad says, I slacked off these techniques since my marketing and sales days. Oh, he's got up here. He says, make visuals, uh, vision, poster boards, goals, dreams, picks, and post them everywhere. Fridge, door, bathroom, mirror, vehicle, dashboard, console. I mean, everywhere. And that's what I do um, by sharing with you guys here tonight. Uh, one of the biggest ways that I find success is to make my goals public. Now, I'll make all, almost all my goals public. It doesn't mean I'm going to succeed on all of them, but you know what? Making them public, it's always in the back of my mind. Well, what's going to happen if I don't succeed? Well, they're, people are going to laugh at me. No, I'm just kidding. But making them public is a way of putting them everywhere because everybody knows what you're looking at doing, right? And uh, Aaron says, oh, you know what? I am going to save that one. 
for a little later, Aaron. We'll, we'll bring that one up too. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my goals this year uh, is to find ways to make more money from existing platforms. Uh, one of them is Amazon Influencers. I signed up for that a year ago. And basically what that is, is once you hit a certain size, you are able to, uh, any videos that you've done, you can cut them down and upload them directly to Amazon. And it allows you to make more uh, Amazon affiliate dollars that way. So I've got my first three videos uploaded to Amazon Influencers. I'm going to spend a ton of time repurposing a lot of my short form content to go on there because if I've already got the content, it might as well be there. Now I got to figure out this whole TikTok thing, guys. Here's the thing. In Canada, TikTok, the um, creators fund doesn't exist. We don't get paid to make content on TikTok in Canada yet. Maybe it will at some point, not sure, but I need to figure out a way to monetize TikTok better. And whether that's driving traffic back to other platforms or whether it's getting more memberships to the uh, patch of the month club, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever it is, I need to figure that out. That's a goal. I don't necessarily know how I'm going to get there yet, but I know it's going to happen this year. Uh, <laughs> here's a cool one. How about Facebook reels? I think right now Facebook reels is probably ready to blow up. I, I love it. Yes. Yeah, so Brian says sponsorships on TikTok. Yeah, you are right now. Um, uh, okay, two things. Nate says, use your address in Tennessee. I, I can. I even have an address in Montana. The problem is, in order to make money like that, I'm pretty sure I need to have a social security number or at least a bank in the U.S. So I don't know how I can make that work, but it's not an excuse. It's just something I need to look at and it's something I've considered. So I'm definitely going to look at it. Brian says, sponsorships. Yes, that I want to do that. Um, it's a fine line, sponsorships, because... You don't want to be sponsored by, you know, some dildo company, right? You, 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 want to, you want to be sponsored by companies that you believe in and use every day all the time, right? So there's that. Um, number three is Facebook Reels. I was talking about that. Um, I think, no, I know Facebook Reels is growing crazy. I put a video up the other day, got 50,000 views on it. I just figured out how to monetize Facebook Reels. I'm just getting started, so I don't know uh, a lot about it. But guess what? I logged in tonight. I made two bucks. I have made two whole dollars on Facebook Reels so far. Um, that's about how much I made in my first year of Amazon affiliate sales, I think. <laughs> I think it was about five bucks, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but that's one. So, and it's also, <laughs> it's also a way to... Um, repurpose the same content. So figure out how to make money from Facebook Reels. I would like to, and this is one I'm going to make public for you guys so that maybe you guys kind of have an idea of, well, just so you can keep me accountable too. But I wrote down teach two online paid courses this year. One of them is probably <laughs> going to be a public speaking course that I'm going to do online. I've been beating that around in my head and Brian knows that I do this a lot. I will mention an idea immediately when it first hits me and then it'll just beat around in my head until it finally comes out and gets monetized. So I'm going to do two online paid courses. I'm going to do the workshop workshop. Yep. So it's going to be an in-person event. We're going to have it here. I'm leaning more toward August than June, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it. Whether it makes money or not this year, if it does or doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm building the foundation, but that's coming. Uh, I wrote down, Brian, this one's for you as well, two more silver runs this year. So I got a couple of really cool ideas, but the first one is just going to be an inverse of what we did. So it's going to be a, a dark and light instead of a light and dark. And I'm really excited to do the next batch of silver. Brian, and I, you know, it's, it's a bit of an investment up front, but Jesus, it sold really, really quick. But I loved it. It was fun. It was something that appealed to everybody in the community. So keep an eye out for that. Um, what else we got coming up? So two silver runs. Now, the other one that I'm thinking about, and um, I'm just going to put it out there. And if somebody copies it, I'd love them to. But <clears throat> something along the lines of, you guys, I, I don't have them here. They're in my bag. But you guys have seen the Zombucks. And they're the, the currency of the apocalypse. Well... I would like to do something like that with silver, but call it um, 
I don't know, like the apocalypse that never happened or modern day apocalypses. And it would be like maybe a four coin series. One will be for Y2K, one will be for COVID, one will be for the 2008, um, what, uh, what do you call it, real estate crash, and one will be for 2012, the Mayan calendar, that kind of stuff, right? So I don't know. I love that idea. If you guys think that's a cool idea, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how. I haven't even mentioned it to Brian yet, but guess what? I'm going to end up doing that this year. The next one, and this is one that I just got lazy on this year, and that was uh, tools of the day. So for quite a while, for almost a year straight, I would post a tool that I use on a regular basis with the Amazon affiliate link. I would just throw it out there. And again, guys, affiliate sales are just numbers. Uh, they're, they're, you know, um, if you put enough, you put 100 out there and you get one sale, great. I don't know. Anyway, just an idea, right? Um, cool. Uh, Ian SK over on TikTok says, do it. I'd buy a set or two. Well, keep an eye out. We'll have a, a traditional set for 2023 coming out with the workshop logo on it. And then probably around the middle of the year, I will have it. So yeah, I definitely, I'm excited. I love doing this shit. So tool of the day, something simple, but posting on social media every single day, something that I've used and throwing the affiliate link up with it. Simple as that. And I just need to do it. That's all. Um, and then of course I focus on content, the things that are, uh, that I want to do to make things better. Uh, more comparison videos, more generator videos, more Costco videos, more battery and charger videos, because those are the things that tend to do the best, right? Um, Haas, that was a good one. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then something I added to content, I want to master and incorporate OBS, the software, into my live streams, because I think that is going to be the program that's going to take things to the next level. And that's where I'm going to... Uh, that's what I'm running tomorrow to run the workshop radio. Uh, so keep in mind, just that kind of thing. Um, and then I wrote down out and left field goals this year. Uh, the Maritimer come out there for a minute, out, out in a boat. So, and these are just kind of random things, but continue to try new things with the podcast. I'm going to go back almost a year ago. I woke up on a Saturday morning and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, for content. And I said, damn it, I am going to do movies because I'm passionate about movies and I love talking about movies. And I said, you know what, I'm going to tie it into prepping and it's going to be, um, it's going to be all about post-apocalyptic films. And you know what, guys, I was nervous, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy, but I remember putting it out there and thinking, well, I'm going to do it because the reason I'm doing this podcast is to entertain, but also for my own personal <laughs> brain development. I did it and it became huge. It has become pop culture and movies have become, you know, 10% of this podcast. And I thank you guys for embracing that because it allows me to share another one of my passions. And so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tofu says, you have so many ideas for content. I can't keep up, <laughs> but it's nice to see you excited about all your ideas. That's just me. Um, I always have so many ideas and, uh, yeah, I, I get excited about them and I turn them into ways to make money too, right? <laughs> Chris Dixon says, you're good at talking about movies. Your enthusiasm shines through. If I'm passionate about something, I tell you guys this. If you're talking to somebody else and you find that thing that makes their eyes shine, good night. They're, they could talk all day and you're going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, so continue to try new things in the podcast. Here's one that I'm going to try this year and I'm going to tell you guys when I do it. I'm going to go an entire week without looking at my numbers. An entire week, guys. I can't go three hours without looking at my numbers. But I'm going to go a whole week. And I'm going to tell you when I'm going to do it. And I want you guys to keep me accountable because it's just something I need to do. Uh, Ian over on TikTok says, local prepper runs his YouTube lives with OBS. I, I need to learn it. I'm going to learn it. And I'm going to make time to do it. So, um <laughs> Yeah, Nate says 53 minutes in for me, ham radio. Somebody, yeah, exactly. There you go. Every time Nate, here, there we are. Nate mentions ham radio. Time to have a drink, guys. There it is. Um, okay, all seasons maintenance. So things for around home, get the renovations completed upstairs at the daycare for the end of January. Getting really, really close. Get the outside renovations done. Focus on snow and property management. Guess what? That's what I've been doing and it keeps working. Personal improvement, guys. I need to make a schedule because uh, I suck at um, remembering certain 
mundane, like every two weeks, go to the 12 unit and vacuum and empty the washing machines and dryers for the change. You know, I'll do it roughly every two weeks, but I'm going to try to do that. Um, become better at organization, become better at paperwork. I wrote down healthy on there because I've done good. And then I've fallen off the keto bandwagon and I'm back to where I started. That is something I need to do, but I also need to not look at the numbers on that one. So it is what it is. Personal projects, guys, finish the backyard. A few things out there you guys have seen me do. I'll talk about that in, in the future. Uh, <laughs> fill in the last of the deck so that I can walk right from the back door to my garage on deck. Um, build the man cave next to the house. It's going to be a big like 24 by 24 garage space outside. That's going to happen. Here's a big one. Hey, my beautiful wife just joined on TikTok um, and somebody named Julian Prue as well. Uh, spend six weeks in Tennessee this year and work on the property. So I plan on spending the month of September in Tennessee and probably two weeks-ish in April. So there, I said it, we're going to do it. Six weeks, what is that? 15% uh, of the year? I'm looking forward to it. Going to renovate this office. We're going to make a better live stream studio space. I'm really excited about that. Put a new roof on the garage. Yeah, there you go. And then numbers goals. So uh, I have a goal, guys, and I'm going to I'm gonna make this public because I want to share it with you. I have a goal of by the end of 2023, making $4,000 a month from all of my content creation. This month will be like 1200 bucks that I made just from YouTube and Amazon. Just being honest, right? I, I, I want you guys to hear this so you know where I'm heading, where I want you guys to head. Uh, I have a goal of 5,000 downloads per episode on the podcast. I've got a goal of appearing on 12 podcasts this year, guys. Again, 12 is enough. I have a goal of growing the Patch of the Month Club to 100 members. But that means I'm also going to build it into a full-fledged membership program where there's going to be discounts or special features. You know, the content won't be behind a paywall, but, you know, so, and there's going to be income coming in from silver, income coming in from teaching online courses. Maybe I'll finally finish a book, but I don't know. We'll see. I wrote down five speaking events this year. I don't know what five those will necessarily be, just like last year. I only knew of one, but I wrote down three. I'm going to try to figure out, no, no, no trying. I'm going to speak five times this year, and it's going to be fun. I love it. There's something that just riles me right up. Ooh, what happened there, guys? That was really weird. Anyway, the screen just shifted, but there's something that riles me right up about getting out and getting up in front of a crowd and sharing what's on my heart. So now for the fun part, what are you guys going to do this year with 2023? How are you going to make 2023 your bitch this year? And what are you going to do? Uh, Andrew Browning over on Facebook. I'm going to build a robust garden. I'm going to get my perennials planted. I'm going to build a chicken coop and the chicken run ready by May. I'm going to be a work at home dad until August. So the business side will be put on hold. Nothing wrong with that, guys. That is absolutely an awesome goal. Uh, let's get, um, all right, we're going to put that there. I'm going to be an asshole. Brian said his goal for 2023 is to hit 1,000 subs on YouTube. I personally believe Brian's going to hit 2,000 subs in 2023. I think he's going to hit 1,000 in the first month of 2023. And then what are you going to do? Got to shoot higher, man. I love it. <laughs> there you go. Renegade says, what's your goal after January? Absolutely. Uh, so there you go. Going to be an asshole. But yes, um, Renegade Butcher says, do or do not. There is no try. Exactly. Trying is not doing unless you succeed. Yeah, sure. There you go. Yoda said it best. Do or do not. There is no try. Nina, who was in here earlier, always love having you said, my goal is to continue to perfect gardening in Texas. Get back to working out and start training to do my first half marathon once my daughter, my doctor clears me to work out and be more present for my kids. I love it. Hey, Darkwing Day 55 over on Twitch. Thank you for coming in. Love it. Um, all right. So did I miss anybody here? Um, there we are. Chris Dixon says, hey, limited supply designs. Jared is over on TikTok as well. And we've had some great people in here. 
Chris Dixon says, all wager that when you're working on your property, your books will almost write themselves. There's something about investing yourself that gets it flowing. It's true. I used my podcast the first six months of this year to basically put together a 45 page outline for these books. So it's coming. Uh, it's definitely coming. I just, um, I personally need to commit the time. I've got a couple of books in the works and it's going to happen. So, all right. Just want to make sure I do not miss anybody's goals here. All right. So we're going to put, we're going to work our way through them. Uh, I want to share these because everybody's making it public. So now you're accountable <laughs> and uh, grounded souls. Good to have you, Corey, over on TikTok. Um, so here we are. Nate Lamaster. Nate wants to put 50 rabbits in the freezer in 2023. I think that's awesome. I love it. I, I you know, I hope they're dead and you clean them and before you put them in the freezer, because it's kind of cruel if you put 50 rabbits alive in a freezer all at once. But I think that's a, a very uh, a great goal to have, Nate. I love it. Limited Supply Design over on TikTok says, I'm going to sell 100 shirts next year. Yes, you are. And the year after that, you're going to sell 1,000. And uh, Limited Supply, Jared, you need to talk to Texas Tennessee Shiner on TikTok or what is your name here? You guys need to connect. Dave, where are you? Uh, he might be gone now, but Jared, remind me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect you with somebody in the community who can probably help you a lot. Um, all right, here we go. Nate, 50 rabbits in the freezer. We hope they're dead first. Next, Martinson family. Get rabbits and chickens again. Acquire a job and a trampoline. No, I'm just kidding. A, a trap line. <laughs> I don't know why it looked like trampoline. Or in the words of Homer Simpson, trampoline. But yes, get rabbits and chickens going again. Haas. Tim, once the... Oh, this is a question. We'll get back to this one in a minute here. Aaron, goal is to work on balancing all things I plan on having time to do. And that's a big one for me too. And when you talked, uh, who mentioned earlier about being more present for your kids, because again, I've talked about the importance of being obsessed with, with these things, whatever it is you want to succeed at, you need to be obsessed with it, but you need to be careful because I mean, balance doesn't exist, but you need to at least strive for it a little bit. Uh, lots project. My goal is to hit 2000 subscribers on YouTube in 2023. That's a very good goal, Brian. I'm proud of you for, uh, shooting for a big goal. Uh, Darkwing Dave over on Twitch. This is cool. I like this. He's moving to Idaho, restarting and building a business to be self-sufficient and not depending on a boss. Hell yeah. Get yourself out of that. Don't be beholden to the man, my friend. Get at it. Do it. I, I can't wait to hear for your success. I love it. What do we got here? Uh, Philippine Nomad. Six figures in social membership, swag merch, income, and more is just, oh, that was for me. But yeah. Um, Mike, if you're still in here, Philippine Nomad, I'd love to know what your goals are in the Philippines this year. Haas, first, getting my ham license, thanks to your guest. Yes, uh, Nate is going to help you with that. <laughs> yeah, because he is now um, an instructor. So there you go. That's a great one. I have had that on my list a couple of years and not succeeded at that. So let's slide back over to live. Um, Brian is going to do his goals on his show Monday morning. Still have some to figure out. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, <laughs> uh, Renegade says, Nate is starting the first ever large scale rabbit cryogenic lab. Absolutely. We're going to do some tests, maybe some scientific testing as well, right? Uh, Nate says to get your general license at a minimum for sure. Uh, trap line is something Nate is working on as well. I love to hear about that. I would really, really love to, uh, hear all about that. <laughs> and, uh, Aaron says freeze dried full rabbit. I, Aaron's always try. I know you guys believe in using the entire carcass of an animal. So what better way than to ship it whole? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's move on from that, Tim, before you, um, I don't know, piss somebody off. <laughs> Philippine Nomad, our goal, my wife and I, with our new DeMarca Coffee Company membership distribution will be 100,000 Filipino pesos or 2,000 per month by end of year. Love it, Mike. I love hearing about that. So guys, make sure you support uh, the Philippine Nomad in that as well. And Martinson wants to shoot more and catch more fish. Yeah. <laughs> and Aaron says paging PETA. Yeah. Well, they're, they're too busy euthanizing animals to come in here and bother with us. But yes, yeah, so that is, I love it. I love hearing that guys. I, I, 
that's one I'd like to do more of too, Martinson, is, is shoot more. I took the kids out on what felt like the coldest fucking day of the year to shoot on Boxing Day. And I introduced my son-in-law to the absolute... Uh, to, he had never even touched a gun in his life, guys. And he was like a little kid at the candy store, a little kid on Christmas morning, shooting like crazy. It was aw I loved it. He, he had so much fun. He was so safe. And of course, these kids who grow up playing video games, he was shooting on target on his first round. So there you go. It was awesome. Uh, Arizona Renaissance Man said, word of the year build hit home for me. I'm planning on getting my channel to be monetized. We'll do everything we can to help you, Arizona. Make sure you share your links. If you're in Telegram, share in there. We'll share it around for you. And uh, that's the key, guys, is to, to make contacts and to have people share it. Because the more eyeballs that see it, the better chance you have. Uh, there's my brother-in-law, Bruce Howard, again. Good to have you. Um, <laughs> Nate says, Tim, we will ship you guys some dehydrated bunny ears for the pups. People eating. Oh, that actually sounds really cool. And I think my dogs would like that. Man, we got a lot of people coming in here tonight now. Here we are. Renegade says, now coming to Two Chicks Homestead for the rabbit foot keychain. New, full rabbit keychains. Well, when I was in high school, guys, we used to have hall passes. And here is the, this is what happened. It was in the woodworking class with Mr. Brophy. Loved him. What a great, great professor he was. Great teacher. So we would make the hall pass. And it started out as like a two inch by two inch piece of wood with a keychain around it. And you had to carry it to the bathroom if you wanted to go. And then kids would lose it. So what would happen is, well, each time that somebody would lose it, he would double it in size until it was half of a four by eight sheet of plywood. So yeah, um, I guess a full rabbit, you wouldn't lose that too easily, would you? Byron's goals. Lose weight. I've put back on too much weight. I feel you, my brother. Absolutely. Increase my social media presence with either my Jeep pages or my personal prepping everyday life. Pick one and focus on it or do them both, whatever you want to do, but make the time. I've talked about the 1% every single day. You're not going to succeed at any of this stuff for anybody out there if you don't set time aside ahead of time. So whether that's an hour a day, whether that's 10 hours a week, whether it's 20 hours a month, I don't know. But figure out what it is, the amount of time you can commit, figure out a time of day that you can commit it, and then do it every damn day. Make it your superpower of doing it every single day. That's where you find success. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, Mike's on a workcation this week down in the Mega Megaopolis Manila at the in-laws house. Printing t-shirts, business cards, selling some gift packs of coffee, ready to launch coffee next week. Excellent. And uh, Lots Project says, is that a two foot by four foot piece of plywood? The last one was a four foot by four foot piece of plywood. It was incredible. And you had to carry it. It was the only way. He, uh, Mr. Brophy was a dick. You're a great guy, but a dick. He got shot in the heart. Uh, yeah, I know. Literally shot in the heart. And he was out hunting with his, I love this story. Anyway, he always wore a necklace, a chain of a cross, a silver cross that had a bullet hole through it. So what happened, I can't remember what the bullet was, but it penetrated through two or three of his outer layers. It hit that cross and it fractured into four pieces and it went all around his heart when it went in. And when he got to the doctor, they expected, because they seen where the kind of the blood never, they figured he was dead. And they ended up, uh, it ended up not touching any major thing in there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Nate says, uh, Jeep page. See, this is, guys, this is what I love. This is where everyone else um, beats ideas around to interacts with one another. This is what happens on Telegram, and you're getting the live taste of it. But Nate says, a Jeep page, toss some portable parks on the air, ham radio, and hard to get places. There you go. You can bring in um, ham radio guys to your page as well. Here's one for Chris Dixon. Get back to hunting. Narrow down and make more consistent content. Debt-free household by end of the year. Hell yeah, brother. And my phrase for 2023 is grab a gear. Motorheads will get it. <laughs> Love it. That. What do I say, guys? That is incredible. We're, we're all going to do great things this year. So let me slide down a little bit. I had a few things to look forward to in 2023 um, in the workshop, but I wanted to make them public as well. So here they are. Um, so first thing you can look for is episode 250, and it's going to be right at the same time as my annual Groundhog Day giveaway. 
Ask me how I started Groundhog Day giveaway. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. It just so happened, and I believe this will be the third year. Third year, for third year, I believe. Yes, it's going to be the third year of the Groundhog Day giveaway. It's going to be in conjunction with the 250th episode, which means by Groundhog Day 2024, if I time it out right and I get up to five episodes a week, I'll be episode 500 right around that time. How crazy is that? But anyway, episode 250, Groundhog Day this year. The workshop, workshop, anybody within a half a day to a day's drive of Provost, Alberta, I would love to have you here. But that's coming. I'm excited about that. We're going to make that happen, Chris Dixon. He doesn't know how much he's going to help me, but he is. No, <laughs> uh, The workshop radio. I really want to make that a thing. And I love it. I love the idea of it. I love recording the little intros. I love turning it into a talk radio thing. I love sharing all of the content with everybody else. I love bringing everyone else onto my platform. Again, what better way to collaborate than to bring nearly 20 content creators together in a background. <laughs> It'll be your background noise, your background soundtrack to a new year. And I'm thinking, hey, maybe we'll do it every three months. I don't know. But I want to get this first one done, work out the kinks, make sure it works, and then we're going to keep at it. Um, more of the workshop watch parties. That is something that I loved. So a couple of weeks ago, we sat down and watched the best Christmas movie of all time, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. As a community, we had a hell of a time. We turned it into a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode, a little bit anyway. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's funny. Um, and if you'd like to go back and watch that, I actually uploaded it to Rumble. So it's there because it's not going on YouTube because it would have been taken down pretty much immediately. But yeah, so there was that. We're going to probably maybe do it every two months, I think. I think it would... Um, I don't want it to ever become a chore. I want it to be something fun that we enjoy. So yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, pr so probably the next one will be Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, as we've talked about. We'll see. Renegade says it's almost as good as Die Hard. Yeah, but I said the best Christmas movie, Renegade. So Die Hard not being a Christmas movie shouldn't be involved in this conversation. Moving right along. What else can you guys expect in 2023? More of the quality you've come to expect. Uh, I am going to strive to become the best damn podcaster, the best damn interviewer, the best damn content creator that I can be so that you guys can get better content and so that you get your money's worth every single day. Nate wants to watch Sausage Party. I don't understand Nate's obsession with sausage. I mean, maybe it's pork sausage or maybe it's something else. I'm not sure, but we'll see. I didn't care for the movie, but if Nate keeps pushing the idea, I might just might just do it. So there you go. Uh, improvement across the board, guys. I'm going to improve everywhere because that's what I do in the run of a year. Um, you're going to see much more short form content, much more. Um, you're going to see, I don't know if I'll end up making five videos a week short, short form, but there's going to be more because I truly believe there is money to be made there and eyeballs to be gained for sure. So you're going to see a lot of shorts from me this year. You're going to see a hell of a lot more of me from the road. So I'm going to up my mobile game. I'm going to, there's just a lot of different things to, um, to making a good mobile live stream, but I never drop out of my content creation schedule. I haven't missed a deadline for a video in three full years. So you guys know you're going to get quality content from me. I just need to make sure that I know how it's going to happen on the road. <laughs> Barrett Bishop, my other brother-in-law says, that's what she said. Every single time. Shorts. Yes. Good to have you. Hunter. Good to have you. What did I miss? Nothing. We've just been shooting the shit for an hour and a half. It's been good time, man. Good time. Um, oh, Brian, have a good night. Say hello to your lovely wife for me, Corey. Always love having you around as well. Appreciate it, brother. Happy New Year. See you next year. <laughs> I beat you to it. There you go. Lots more of Tim Shorts. Yikes. Oh, Jesus. Chris Dixon. So, yes. Martinson Family says Caddyshack meatballs in both Grease movies. Absolutely. I'm thinking uh, some movies we might try this year as a watch party. Blast from the Past, Idiocracy, Office Space. Those are three that I've been kicking around that I thought might be a lot of fun. So anyway, if you guys have suggestions, um, like I said, much more of me on the road. And the big, hairy, audacious goal for 2023 is, hey, why not have Mike Rowe on the Workshop Podcast? I'm working on it, guys. I've got... <sighs> anyway... Let's just put it that way. I'm really, really working on it. I'm really excited. Talk about making connections. Uh, let's just say I'm a huge fan of making, uh, of speaking goals out loud. 
you know, if you guys love Gary Vee or hate him, I've seen a ton of his viral content. And something he has said for like 10 or 15 years is someday he's going to own the New York Jets. And he says it. And by making it um, out loud, people hear it and they're like, hey, you know, I believe it was actually Jared that might have been in the Micro Foundation. And he sent an email. And of course, they turned him down too. But it it's just going to be it. I'm going to have him on here. Uh, I actually... Anyway, I'm not going to let, I, I, I don't have any guarantee he's ever going to come on here, but I believe he will come on here. And I have a connection that you guys will find out about pretty soon that'll, um, it'll get me one step closer in the six degrees of separation to Mike Rowe. We'll have him on here. He's a busy dude, but we'll get him on, whether it's for 15 minutes, a half hour, or a full hour sit down. I would love that, but we'll see. Anyway, we're going to work on it, guys. Oh, excuse me. And, uh, Renegade says I need to get just a little bit dirtier to get Mike Rowe on here. Hey, Terry, good to have you over on TikTok. Uh, she is always helping me out at the local plumbing store. Always appreciate her because there's not much they don't have over there. And they've got me out of a bind many occasions. Tofu says, I think that your content is good because you enjoy it and see value in it yourself. It's true. Uh, a person needs an outlet, a creative outlet to do things. So where do we head from here, guys? Well, tomorrow night we're going to go to bed. And it's going to be 2022. If you're old like me, you're probably going to go to bed about seven o'clock. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, you're going to go to bed tomorrow night and then you're going to wake up in the morning and it's going to be the next year. It's going to be 2023. So I get to do all those corny dad jokes when I go to bed and I'll say to the kids, hey, see you next year, guys. And they'll say, shut up, dad. You're not cool. You're mid. Apparently, that's what the Gen Z say right now. Apparently, if you're from Iowa, uh, Ohio, you're also really lame. I don't know. Something else that the kids say nowadays. But you're going to go to bed on 2022. And you're going to wake up in 2023. Nothing's going to have changed except for that four-digit number on the cal calendar. But what we use, those are milestones. Those are markers. It's like when you're walking along the road. And along here, they'll have those white markers. Out east, they have them a lot too, but they're they're like mile markers, right? But it's just one of those things because, you know, a guy much wiser than me, Jack Spierko, talks about it all the time. What are you going to do with your dash? When you go to a, when you go to a cemetery and you see so-and-so, 1945 to 2015, that's the day they're born. It's the day they die. Everything they did is in that little hyphen right there. Uh, my grandmother passed away this year at 100. Her husband died in 1986. There was, so what What does that, 1986 to, so that would have been, what, 30, 30 some years, right? That she lived without a husband. All of that time in that dash was whatever she did with the time she had left. That's all we ever get to do, guys, is what we're going to do with that. And that's why we look at these years, because... Every one of us gets a finite amount of them on this earth. And if we want to do something, what do they say? Uh, every human being dies two deaths. The first time they die, the first time is when you die. And the second time is when the last person who knows who you are dies. Well, all I can say is uh, we can't control per se when we personally pass away. But what we can control is leaving a motherfucking legacy that everybody knows about what we did, whatever it happens to be, whether it's your kids, whether it's a hundred people that you change their lives. That's what we're going to do. So that's why we set goals because this shit doesn't happen by mistake. You don't wake up tomorrow and have the life you always wanted to live. The reason you do it, the reason you get it is because you go out there, you grab it by the balls, you make life your bitch, and you do the right thing every single fucking day for all of 2023. And you get that 3,800% improvement, right? So there we are, guys. That's it. What more can I say tonight? Let's finish off this old-fashioned. There it is. So it all depends on you. That's right, Renegade. It's all we can do. Guys, that's it for me tonight. I... Uh, I loved it. Thanks for looking back last night. Thanks for looking forward with me tonight. Please make sure you tune in tomorrow for the workshop radio. I'll have it all set up. What we're going to end up doing is hopefully the content creators will just pop in and out and leave notes, leave chats, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, I, Nate, I am actually working on that. <laughs> I ended up, my order got canceled and 
Anyway, Nate wants to know when I'm getting my freeze dryer. It's not on my list of goals, but it is coming. Uh, I've already been talking to Becky about that quite a bit. So thanks, Terry. I appreciate that. She said, well said over on TikTok. It's been a great year. Um, <laughs> Ian says, that's it. Channel Yearner, John Willis. I got to tell you guys, um, there haven't been too many people this year who have motivated me more and encouraged me more and helped me more than John Willis. He's a dude that didn't know me at all. And uh, for whatever reason, saw something in me and said, Tim, you keep doing and I'll keep helping. And that's uh, exactly what he's done for me. And I appreciate it. And uh, Limited Supply Design says, I'll drop in from time to time. I loved having you guys. I love having people on TikTok that actually interact. This is great. Thank you very much. But that's it. So in the great words of the Dixon way, see you next year, kids. And uh, yeah, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a motherfucking great 2023.